Good morning and welcome to Grace for today. Blessings, everybody. God bless you. Our prayers, the Lord is blessing you and keeping you and you're finding all that God has for you. You're looking deep into the word of the Lord and you're finding that God is promises. He has made promises to you and his word never fails. His word never fails. God keeps his promises. If you don't know anything else, you need to know that. God keeps his promises. You need to know that before you get to a trial. You need to know that God keeps his promises before you get to a test. I was getting dressed and this thought came to my mind. And the Lord said this. This is what the Lord said. He said, if we would practice like Job did. Job said, all of my appointed time, I'm going to wait until the change comes. He reminded himself of everything that you, you hear Job says. It was about blessing God. If we would practice and build a repertoire, if you would of praise, of declaring how great God is. We practice saying negative things all the time. We practice believing what's not true because the kingdom of God isn't as real to us as what we see around us, as what we can touch and feel. But if we would begin practicing the reality of the kingdom of God, I think that our vocabulary would change. I think our expectation would change. I mean, some of us are getting a late start. <laughs> I mean, some of us get a late start with reminding ourselves to say what God says. Some of us are getting a late start with reminding ourselves that faith moves God. Some of us get a late start with changing our vocabulary. But if we would begin to practice saying what God says about ourselves, about our bodies, about the way we think, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, I wonder how much further we get in life. Thank y'all for sharing as soon as you come on. I'm just, I'm just sharing a few thoughts from this morning. We, we would, we, if we would practice the presence of God, the reality of the kingdom of God above everything else earlier in life, making the kingdom of God real. Not just because, you know, I felt a quickening. Mm -mm. Because I know he's real. I know. Where's Annie Ingram? Well, because I know he's real. What's that? I just talked to him this morning. He's real. Hallelujah. He's real. God bless you. Good morning, everybody. Blessings to all of you. Let's get started. All right, so we're talking about Destiny Destroyers. And I was looking at our text that we've covered the past two days. I'm going to go to to verse 9, but I wanted to just kind of hone in. Uh, on a couple of things on verses three through eight. Good morning. Uh, I want to look just at a few things that just kind of popped out at me as we were looking here. And um, it says this, um, that in verse eight, and his brethren said to him, and y'all, we read this yesterday, said to him, shall, the, the, my mama's old Bible said, you're going to be king over us. This is what his, Joseph's brothers said to him. You're going to be king over us. They didn't know how prophetic they really were. They didn't know how prophetic they really were. Don't you, don't you forget, your enemies will speak. And you just don't. They may mean, they may be uh, being facetious or rude or not. Hey, Minnie Reen. Okay, sorry. Hey, uh, Minnie, Minnie Jamerson. She's my college friend. Amen. Uh, Y'all in Greenville, y'all better go over to Gospel Land USA. All right. I need to come up there. I really do. But y'all, all right, let me go back. So, so here we go. Sometimes our enemies, though they have other intentions, they really are speaking prophetically over you. They, you think you're, you're all that. You said it. I didn't say it. You said it. But amen, I receive it. 
Don't you let people, that people will sit there and say all sorts of stuff about you. Stop believing the lies. Flip it and say what God says. You think you all that? You said it. I receive it though. Hallelujah. You think you're special. You said it. Amen. His, his brother said, so you think you're going to be king over us? You said it. I was just telling y'all the dream. I was just telling y'all what I dreamed, but you interpreted it and you said. We must remind ourselves our enemies, even though they hate you, will often speak truth. Wrong motivation, but they'll often speak truth. So here, they said, there were several things they said about that they hated Joseph for. And there are three things I want to share with you. That was the three. My fingers were, I don't know why my camera looks lopsided, but it's not. So there were three reasons they hated Joseph. And I want to point those out. Then I want to go to verse nine. All right. This is jo Genesis 37, verse nine. Verse four says, his brethren saw their father loved him more than all his brethren. They hated him. That's the first one. They saw that Joseph was loved more than everybody else, so they hated him. People can hate you because, exactly, Janet Travis, you sure are. You're God's favorite daughter. Me too. All right. So, you see, they hated him because he was loved special. First time, first thing. Second, verse 8. Yet, and they hated him yet the more for his dreams. So here you have the second thing. He told them two dreams that he had. And I haven't gotten to the second one yet. But they hated him for his dreams. And third, they hated him for his words. They hated him for what he spoke. And they hated him probably, in addition, the words referring to the fact that he was so naive and innocent, realized, didn't even realize they hated him. People, sometimes people want you to know how much they dislike you. And when you don't even realize it, and you just continue oblivious to how much hate they have for you. <laughs> and you just carry on like it's nothing. Exactly, Annie Ingram. You are a daddy's girl, without a doubt. He favors you. We need to remind ourselves, we are all special to our father. And he speaks well of us. He has good things in store for us. He has blessings with our names on them. You believe the lie that says he blesses everybody but you. It's a lie. You're his favorite son. He has good things in store for you. His blessings are chasing you down and overtaking you. Yeah, you made some mistakes, but he ain't holding your foot to the fire. Verse 9. Here he says, and he dreamed yet another dream and told it his brethren. So he had another dream. And he told his brother again, he's not getting the clue they hate him. But listen, God has a plan. God still uses, is going to use that hatred to catapult Joseph to where he wants him to go. And behold, I have dreamed a dream more. I dreamed another dream. I dreamed another dream. I dreamed another dream. And behold, the sun and the moon and the 11 stars. He, this man, that's a song, Elder Ingram, and it's true. I found out that if I trust him, he will provide. I think that's right. But it's true. If I trust him, he going to provide. No matter who closes the door, he provides. God provides. I don't know all the rest of that. So, listen, they say singing. I'm supposed to be teaching. Okay, so he says, and he dreamed yet another dream and told his brethren, behold, I've dreamed a dream more. They hated him, but he dreamed another dream and he kept telling it. 
Behold, the sun and moon and the 11 stars made obeisance to me. They bowed down before him. And he told it to his father. And I think sometimes Joseph is just looking for answers. Somebody to explain because it seems so real. Like it's really going to happen. Though he was the youngest. It couldn't possibly happen to him. And sometimes, beloved, you will find that there are things that may happen in your life. And dreams are things that you may find in your life. You think, well, it couldn't possibly mean that. You stay the course. You stay the course because God has a way of working things out. You don't have to make it happen. It's not your job. It's not your job to make it happen. It's your job to keep trusting God. It's your job to stay in the word. It's your job to seek first the kingdom. It's your job to honor God above all. It's your job to love the Lord with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all your mind. It's God who works in us to will and to do of his good pleasure. God will make it good. It's God who brings it to pass. It's God who orders our steps. I don't have to work it. I need to follow him. His sheep hear his voice. His sheep hear his voice. He told his father, I think he's just looking for somebody. And sometimes we do that. We're looking for somebody to give us the answer, to give us the clue, to tell us what to do. And I understand it. I spent a, I spent a, I spent a lot of time until I learned and I'm still learning. And, and there's nothing wrong with godly counsel. I don't have any problem with that. The Bible says in the multitude of counsel, there is safety, but it's God who orders our steps. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Though he fall, your steps are ordered, but you still can fall. He shall not be utterly, I'm yelling, utterly cast down. It ain't over. But I ain't going to live in fear. He told it to his father and to his brethren, and his father rebuked him. His father rebuked him. We look for validation, Roberta Ingram, affirmation, and sometimes we're just looking for folks to tell us what to do. I've been there. I understand it. My insecurities, my, my, my lack of, my, my low self-esteem, you look for that. Because we, sometimes you can grow up not having any, you don't have confidence in yourself or toward God. But as you grow, you learn how to trust God more. His father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee to the earth? His daddy didn't even get it. His dad. So once sometimes you're looking for something from somebody who doesn't get. They don't get it. They don't know how to get it. They don't possess what you need because they don't have the answer either. And there's no offense to them. I remember having issues some 10, 15 years ago and looking for someone to give me a clue to help me through this process. And I was talking to, at the time I was going to a counselor. Yes, I believe in counselors. The spirit feels saved ones whose jobs as a in this their secular jobs per se, that's what they do. But this lady loved the Lord and she was a good, godly um, counselor. I don't know if her degree was psychology, but she was a doctor. That was what she did. So I had the privilege of having a woman of God to be my counselor. And she gave good counsel, let me just say. She helped me so I can hip y'all, praise God. But and she said, Have you ever thought? that maybe they don't know how to help you. They love the Lord. They're a man or a woman of God. But have you ever thought that maybe they don't know what to do to help you? You're going to have to get to God for yourself. You're going to have to pursue God for yourself. You're going to have to get after God for yourself. We can't always, there will be times people can answer, but there may be times they're going to do what, what Joseph's father did. It's just rebuke because they don't know what to do. Doesn't mean God isn't giving you those dreams. It means they don't know. They won't say it, but they don't know either. 
All they're going to give you is what they know. People can't give you more than what they know. You can't be mad at them. Right. And, and I, let me just say, I don't discount folk because they haven't been that way. Because some people will say, I know y'all believe this too. Some people believe this. But if you ain't, you don't have no cheering, you can't help me. That's a lie. Some people can't. But there are plenty of people who can. You, you've never been married. You can't. Well, now... That, that may be true for some people, but there are folk who are not married who can help you. Because sometimes standing outside looking in, you can see if you got wisdom. Jesus wasn't married, but he taught on it. According to the scripture, some people believe Paul wasn't married, but he taught on it. So, it just depends on what, where your perspective is. The word of God is true. You've never been a homosexual, but you can teach on it. And not to condemn it necessarily, but how to get... Uh, to God and to be healed, to be made whole. You've never had gender issues and conflicts, but you can teach that you should be able to stand on the word of God to give direction. You've never been a drug addict, but you ought to know how to get free. So our concepts are, are, are we only, we can only hold true to that to a certain degree. You've never been an alcoholic, but you ought to know how to get free. So this concept that we have, that if you've never walked a mile in my shoes, you can't tell me what to do. That's a two-edged sword, beloved. It's a two-edged sword. It's a two-edged sword. Don't fall on it and get hurt. Let's just stick with the word. The word works. Opinions. The word works. The word works. Stick with it. Because it will set you free. My time is gone. We're going to pick this up. But here you understand that Joseph is in a, in a situation where he really is a young man who has a heart that just, God is just dealing with. If it was in our time, he's just a young man that God is dealing with. He doesn't know what to do. He didn't have an Eli who would say, oh, God must be calling him. Next time you hear that voice, just say, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. And sometimes that's all we can do. But we, we should do what the scripture says. We pray for people until Christ be formed in them. The fundamentals of the gospel are simple. We make them complex. Seek the Lord first. All the things are added. The simplicity of the gospel Seek first the kingdom of God and all the stuff gets added. Don't get that twisted. You can't shout a demon out. That has to be cast out. We need to get the word of God. Get the word of God in us. Let the word of God dwell in you richly. I got to go. My time is gone. I have way past my time. But I need you to understand that. We, we can't believe all these cliches that people have said for generations. Some of it's not true. It's just not true. It's just not true. I, I have more. Because we go to doctors who never had a womb, a uterus, and let them do surgery on us who will never experience what we've experienced. And we're good with it. Because they've gone to school. We're okay with that. Our logic is flawed, in my opinion. That is an opinion. But we're okay with that in the secular world. But when it comes to church, we have all these things that we... Stick with the word. That's what works. Now, if folk live in all sorts of raggedy lives, get rid of that. All right, I'm done. I'm done. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for what you've begun in us. Let your word dwell in us richly that we can accomplish everything that you've sent it out to. Father, accomplish your will in us, every man, every woman, every child. Let your word dwell in us richly. Let us love your word above everything else. God, give us good, godly marriages. 
put the the good the people who have good marriages let them realize that they have good marriages and share the tools that work for them that may work for someone else but primarily that the fact that they love you above all else and that you are the third cord in that uh, marriage the third partner in that relationship. You're the third partner in their finances. Father, we thank you that you are the missing ingredient in their in our lives. You make it all good. You make it all good. You are our healer. You are our financier. You're the one who you're our counselor. You give direction. Bring into our lives the relationships that we need. And every relationship you've not ordained, you've not desired, we ask you that you cut it off and help us to be okay with it. But Lord, the ones you've ordained, we declare no more missed connections. No more missed connections. Father, I pray even now for the relationships or marriages where the enemy is trying to mess up our relationships. We bind the enemy now. We cast out every bit of discord and we command the peace of God. Oh, the peace of God to come now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let healing be our bread. Heal our homes. Heal our marriages. We will not be discontent. We will not feed ourselves discontentment by looking at television and feeding ourselves the things that are leading to that discontentment. Watching all those, those television shows and listening to ungodly advice. Thank you, Father. You are our portion. You are our portion. Thank you. Heal our children. We thank you now that your word is working in us and that your glory is being revealed in our lives. Father, those of us who are unmarried, help us to be content knowing that you will bring us into our wealthy place at the right time. Our time belongs to you. And we trust you to make us content where we are. To fulfill your will. And that you will get glory in our lives. That there will be glory after this. And we will have no more missed connections. That we'll be busy serving you until the day we say, I do. We'll thank you even now that your will be done in us. Every one of us. Cover our little ones in the name of Jesus. So it is. Father, I ask that every need of ours be met. In Jesus' name, so it is. Amen. All right. Hey, don't y'all forget, I'll be teaching Sunday school right here. Well, I'm Grace for today, but on my church's homepage, Tabernacle of Prayer, I'll share it uh, Sunday morning at 9 a.m. If you can join us, great. Um, I'll post the scriptures. I don't have them with me here. Oh, uh, but anyway, I'll post the scriptures for uh, Sunday morning, the background scriptures and the text so that you can uh, share with us on Sunday morning. Uh, lesson two. I don't have them on here, but I'll share those. And, uh, hopefully I will, but we will, um, Sunday morning, 9 a.m. Central time. I'll be teaching Sunday school at Tabernacle of Prayer. If you get a chance to join, don't miss your church. So, but if you're getting ready for church, you can join us for Sunday school. This is a little book called Come Holy Spirit. And I hope you'll join me then, but I will share this video. Please share, um, this live and then uh, we'll upload this to YouTube very shortly. Join me Monday. Thank you. My birthday is Sunday and uh, I'm so excited. I'll be 60. I don't really have plans. You know, I'm one of those people. Uh, I'm really grateful. I, and I've said this before. If I could do anything, it would be go to my mama's grave and sit there and contemplate. I know it sounds morbid, but it's really not. Uh, and just thank God that my mama had me because it's really a celebration to her because I'm here. It's because it's because of her that I'm here. It's the grace of God. So I'm just thankful that uh, my mama had me. I am grateful. I am. So Sunday, I may do a post because I'm excited to be 60 years old. I really am. I'm just excited. I just, I'm excited. I know a lot of people get Y'all can go if you need to, but so you can catch the replay later. I'm just 
rambling right now. But a lot of people get they get discouraged about getting older. But I have always people don't listen to you till you get older. I don't know what the deal is. I don't know. But Thank you, Missionary Green. Uh, hey, Lady Serena. But I'm super excited to be 60 years old. I just, I was excited to be 25. I thought it was the greatest thing ever. I was excited to be 50. And I'm super excited to be 60. I really am just excited. Thank you so much, Kirby. And uh, so really, I'm just, I'm just glad. I don't have any plans necessarily. My sister, I think she's uh, been asking me for probably a month. Um, I think we're going to have dinner or something, but I'm just excited. So y'all just pray for me. You know, I don't know what it is. I'm just glad. And uh, I'm a grateful girl. So there, that's my testimony and I'm not taking it back. I'm excited. Y'all pray my strength to the Lord. Share the video, type in, catch the replay, hashtag grace for today. Join me Monday morning, but please click the subscribe uh, notification so that you can see if I happen to come on Sunday because I have a feeling I mean, it's going to come on. And say a little word about my birthday. All right, I gotta y'all, I gotta go. See you all for sure on Sunday morning at night. All right, I will. Thank you, Missionary Green. Uh, if y'all don't put birthday on that Cash App or Venmo or PayPal, it's gonna go straight to Grace for today because I can't steal the Lord's money. I'm just telling you, I can't steal the Lord's money. It's going to grace for the day. I'd rather err on the side of caution. If you don't say this is for you, Edna Jameson, it's going to grace for today. I just, rule of thumb, can't steal. All right, so that's just, does anybody needs to know that? Y'all need to know that now. Gotta go. Have a great day, everybody. See you all on uh, Sunday morning, 9 a.m. for sure, for those who'll be listening, and maybe sometime Sunday for my birthday. Third Saturday, don't forget, we'll do live class, Lord willing. Y'all pray my strength in the Lord. All right, have a great day, everybody. See y'all later. And don't forget, time spent in the Word of God is never wasted, and you have been graced for today. Have a great day. Peace.